Hey Cake Chomps and Mini Chomps and welcome back to another episode of Mr Baker's Cake School. Now I think a lot of people think of gingerbread as something that we eat at Christmas, but actually, other than gingerbread houses, I think you can have gingerbread whenever you want, particularly gingerbread men. They're definitely one of my favourite snacks to pick up if I'm in a bakery. How about you? And do you prefer crunchy gingerbread or soft gingerbread? Luckily, in this week's video, I'm gonna give you a couple of hints and tips so that you can make gingerbread the way that you like it. Anyway, it's that time again. Time to go and wash your hands, pop on your apron, and let's get baking. Right then, ladies and gentlemen. So, first things first, I'm gonna go through all of the ingredients you will need to make your gingerbread men. So, to make your gingerbread, you will need 150 grams of dark brown sugar. The reason why we're using dark brown today is because that darker sugar will give us that nice kind of molasses -y taste that you expect from gingerbread. You wouldn't get quite the same result if you used white or golden sugar. You are going to need 120 grams of golden syrup. Now, if you can't get hold of golden syrup, you can try using corn syrup, or you could always use honey, but honey has a much stronger flavor than golden syrup, so you'll probably be able to taste it. If you like honey, that's probably not a problem. You will need 60 grams of black treacle. And again, black treacle is created in the sugar making process. And again, it gives you a really strong kind of molasses -y flavor. A really important ingredient and one not to miss out. Now, of course, we are making gingerbread men, so you are going to need two and a half teaspoons of ground ginger. But I like to add a few other spices to my gingerbread men as well. So you're also going to need two teaspoons of ground cinnamon and one teaspoon of ground nutmeg. You're going to need two tablespoons of water, 190 grams of butter, or margarine will work too, and finally 450 grams of plain flour. So like last week, that's the one that doesn't have a raising agent in it. It's sometimes called all-purpose flour. Now, just like our chocolate brownies last week, gingerbread uses the melting method to mix all of the ingredients together. So, we're going to be using the hob again. Now, remember, whenever we're working with something hot, what do we need to do? You're right, we need an adult to help us. So do make sure you have your adult nearby. And before we get started, you're also going to need to line a large mixing bowl with some cling film. I'll explain why in a minute. This can be quite tricky to do, but don't worry, just take your time. It doesn't need to be super neat, just so long as that inside is all lined with the cling film. Now what we're going to do is start by putting some of our ingredients into the saucepan which is on this hob. And I'm going to turn it on to about a medium heat. Again, remember, safety first, your adult must be nearby or helping you. Into the saucepan, we're going to put the sugar, the syrup, this is very sticky stuff, the treacle, this is even stickier stuff, the water, and all of our spices. So that's the ginger, the cinnamon, and the nutmeg. And then using a wooden spoon, we're just going to stir that until everything has melted and it's all coming to the boil. Now, if you remember from last week when we were boiling the water ready to melt our chocolate and butter, boiling means that the mixture is bubbling. So that's what we're looking for. We're looking for little bubbles to just be popping in our mixture. So hopefully you can see now that my mixture is bubbling away nicely and it's starting to rise up in the pan. When that happens, it's time to take this off the hob and move it to the side. And again, remember, just like last week, if you don't have heat-proof worktops, you need to put something down underneath the pan, otherwise you could burn them. I'm now going to switch from my wooden spoon and I'm going to use the whisk to help me mix the butter into my melted sugar and spice mixture. I'm going to do about half at a time, just because I think it will be easier. Again, it's really important that you do this safely. 
because your adult says that they need to do this bit for you. And I don't want to hit any argument. Once that butter's nearly melted, I'm just going to pop in the rest and keep mixing until it's all disappeared. When you can't see the butter anymore, it's time to add in the bicarbonate of soda. And what you'll find will happen is gradually the mixture will start to get a little bit thicker. The last thing we need to do is sift our flour into that saucepan. Make sure you use a metal sieve because obviously the pan is still quite warm and we don't want a plastic one to melt. And once we've done that, I'm going to go back to the wooden spoon and just mix it all together. This time, you don't need to worry about folding. You can literally just stir it until it all comes together into one big lump. Once it's nearly finished, it will get quite hard to stir. I've even snapped a wooden spoon doing this before. So if you need someone to help you who's a bit bigger and a bit stronger, that's okay. And once you can't see any more flour and your mixture looks like mine does here, that's essentially our gingerbread dough ready. But of course it's still hot at the moment and if we tried to turn this into gingerbread biscuits, they wouldn't work. What we need to do now is let this cool down completely and in fact we're going to put it in the fridge to get nice and cold. That's when we need our bowl that we've put the kingdom on because what this will do is stop the gingerbread mixture sticking to the bowl. Otherwise when we take it out of the fridge it's going to be really hard to get out. So I'm going to put my mixture into the bowl and then this needs to go into the fridge for about 90 minutes to two hours. Now, if you're an adult making this and you fancy upping the ginger flavour even more, one of my favourite things to do just before I put it into the bowl is to add in some finely chopped stem ginger. When you bite into the gingerbread and every now and then you get that hit of really strong powerful ginger, it's really nice. But it might be a little bit too much for some of our younger bakers, which is why I've left it out today but it's an optional extra that you can add if you fancy it. But anyway, I'm going to go and pop my mix into the fridge for two hours, and while it's in there, you probably already know what I'm going to do. Yeah, it's time for the washing up. I'll see you in a little while. Okay then guys, when your mixture has had enough time to completely chill down, in theory, you should be able to use the clean film to help you lift it out of the bowl. Let's see if mine will come out easily. Yes! And then, what we're going to do is just kind of give it a bit of a knead, like we did when we made our dough, just to make sure everything is nice and fully combined, like we want it to be. Okay, it should all come together in a nice smooth ball like this. When you've done that, this is the perfect time to preheat your oven. You're going to want to preheat your oven to about 160 degrees fan, which is 180 if you don't have a fan oven. You also are going to need to line some baking sheets with parchment paper or greaseproof paper. For the amount of dough we've made here, you should be okay with two large sheets, but if you want to have some more just in case, that's fine. One factor that will help you decide is how thick you decide to roll out your gingerbread, which is what we're going to do next. Grab some more of your plain flour and sprinkle it over your work surface. Sprinkle a little bit extra on the top and then start to push it out with your hand first of all. 
Make sure you can move it around so it doesn't get stuck. And then we're going to need to use a rolling pin to roll it out. You want a crunchy gingerbread, which is ideal for building gingerbread houses and things like that. You want to take this quite thin, probably about three millimeters. If you prefer a softer, chewier gingerbread, you can leave it a little bit thicker. So I'll let you decide what to do. If you find your gingerbread is crumbling a little bit, it might be that you didn't chill it quite enough, so you can always pop it back in the fridge for a bit longer. Or you might find it easier to roll it out a little bit at a time, rather than doing it all in one go like I'm doing. Don't forget when you're rolling out your gingerbread dough, this is the perfect time to get your ruler out and practice your measuring. Remember we're counting to about three millimeters if we want a thin and crispy gingerbread. When you're happy with the thickness of your gingerbread, it's time for the fun bit, and that's cutting out all of our gingerbread men. Now I have a gingerbread cutter that looks like this. Hopefully you can see that on the screen. Now if you don't have one of these, that's fine. You can use a normal round cookie cutter or any other shapes that you might have in your house. I'm gonna start near one edge and I'm going to push my cutter in and then very gently move it around so that I can then slide it out onto my hand and put it onto the tray that I've lined with the greaseproof paper. When I've done that once, I'm just going to keep going and cut out as many gingerbread men as I can. Now you'll notice that I am leaving some space in between my gingerbread men because although they shouldn't spread too much, they will a little bit. So I don't want them to all end up joining together in one giant gingerbread man. So I've managed to put eight of them on my first tray and I'm going to carry on and fill up my second tray. Now when you've managed to cut as many gingerbread men as you can out of your dough mixture, we're going to just gather it all back in, squish it back into a ball again and roll it out again. And then we just carry on cutting out our gingerbread men. And then basically just keep going, squeezing it back together, rolling it out, cutting out until you've used up all of your mixture. Now just like when we were making scones a couple of weeks ago, you'll probably find that the first ones you did come out the best. But I like gingerbread regardless of whether it's chewy, whether it's crispy, I don't think there's such thing as bad gingerbread. And when you've got all your gingerbread men cut out, it's time to put them in the oven. They really don't take very long, only about 10 to 12 minutes, so keep an eye on them closely. And as soon as you see them starting to go a little bit darker on the edges, that means that they are ready. When you first take them out the oven, they still will be a little bit soft in the middle, but don't worry, as they cool down, some of the excess moisture or liquid in them will evaporate away and they will dry out more. So don't panic if you check them and they feel a little bit soft, they're still ready. 10 to 12 minutes. I'm gonna go and bake mine and I'll see you then. And as always, through the magic of editing, there are my gingerbread men. Now, I must confess, mine did end up taking a little bit longer than 12 minutes. There's obviously something in the air, but the best way to tell that they are done, besides the fact that they've had enough time, is down the sides here, that's where you should see them start to change color first. When you can see that, that's a good sign that they are ready to come out of the oven. As I said earlier, when they first come out, they are still quite soft. So, much as it is tempting to want to dig in straight away, if you want to see what they are actually like in terms of texture and crunch, the best thing to do is let them cool down completely. To help them do that, we're going to move them off the trays onto some cooling racks, like we've done with our other bakes. And like I always say, whenever we're working with something hot, get your adults to do it for you. Now I'm going to use a palette knife just to help me lift these up because I don't want to touch them too much while they're all soft. So I'm just sliding the palette knife underneath and then lifting it up and 
placing it onto the cooling rack. As I say, what you should find happens is as they cool down, they grow harder and they'll get sturdier as well. Now, if you decided to cut out some shapes and you have found that your mixture has spread slightly, while they're still oven fresh, they are soft enough that you can cut them out again. Once they go hard though, it's a different story, so you need to be quick if that's something you want to do. That's usually a bit more important if you're doing something like a gingerbread house and you need lots of straight sides. I think it adds a bit more character and charm to my gingerbread men if they look a little bit unique. Now normally, at this point, I would tell you what to do with your gingerbread men next in terms of decoration, but what you need to do is bake along with this week's video and create your own batch of gingerbread men. Then you need to decorate them however you fancy and then share them with me on social media. Now you can either post them to my Facebook page which is Mr Baker's Cakes or you can tag me on Instagram or Twitter both of which are at Mr Baker's Cakes. So there you go guys that is how to bake your very own batch of delicious gingerbread men. I do hope you enjoyed this week's episode and if you did, as always, don't forget to give it a thumbs up down below. That will make sure YouTube knows to show this to even more people. Wishing you all a safe, happy and healthy week and I'll see you next time. Take care guys.